Okay, very good. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Altwork podcast, where we explore the new frontiers of work and challenge everything you thought you knew about your career, business, and the world of work. I am Victoria Rellas. And I'm Saki Brasul. And today we'll be discussing Fucked by Success, Untrap Yourself from the Past and Design Your Future. Um, this is a provocative question and title, and we acknowledge that, and we thought very carefully um, about it before going on with it, but we thought it was a question worth asking. So I guess my starting question for you, Sakib, is how did the idea of being fucked by your past, past success uh, come to you? What was like the insight or inspiration to this topic? Yeah, sure, Victoria. You know, if you attend these uh, industry conferences and lunches, I'm sure you've experienced um, attending these places where there are so many successful people, but no one is listening to anyone else other than themselves. And everyone is only speaking to validate and assert what they know to be true. So, well, earlier this year, I was at a meeting like this where I was invited to speak at a private gathering of uh, business leaders who had uh, uh, essentially previously started and run majorly successful companies and now they were wondering about the future of their company as GPT had just come out. And the event was supposed to be about exploring new ideas and directions. But I felt that everyone was just talking over each other, not really listening or exchanging ideas or wondering what was next. I couldn't really bring anything to the table. So while driving back, I was, uh, I was puzzled. I was thinking like, my goodness, What's going on? I These people who were very senior executives who had invited me to speak, but they could not hear a single word that I had to say about this new wave of generative AI, what it might mean for their companies, how to move, how to think, what might be possible. There was essentially no conversation going on. There was just a lot of, um, you want to say, assertion of the former conclusions they had gotten. And driving back, I was puzzled. What was happening there? Maybe I didn't do a, a good job explaining things. Maybe um, I didn't listen very well. Then it was in that moment, I had a sudden realization. It was like a flash of insight that occurred to me that these people were actually fucked by success in a manner of speaking. They had gotten success before, they knew how to move at uh, one point, and now their old success is essentially uh, was essentially blinding them, blocking them, and they don't have a chance to participate in this kind of a mood in this new wave that's coming. So I began to wonder what this phenomena is all about, where people who appear to be highly successful are no longer listening to the changing waves and the shifts that are going on and trapped in their own thinking about what they learned before. Um, as a matter of fact, recently I heard from one of them, uh, the CEO of a decent sized company here locally in Seattle, they're asked to step down from a major position. Hmm. And they could not figure out what their role was in this new company. And I think that uh, this inspired me to uh, find some courage. And in spite of the provocative uh, topic, provocative title, to talk about this, that how we get fucked by our past success. Mm. Got it. Okay. Interesting. Thank you. Um, so is it fair to say that you noticed that some of these people were maybe very arrogant? Like, is that what fucked by success means? Like, they just can't listen to anything new? I suppose um, you could call it arrogance, but you know I don't like to talk about arrogance as if it's like a permanent fixture of human beings. Mm -hmm. um, in certain way, we are all uh, arrogant, mm -hmm. but it is when um, we invest so much in how we are perceived mm -hmm. that what we are claiming does not match the match the preparation. What is arrogance? If you look at arrogance ontologically, it is essentially a great deal of confidence with no preparation. 
Mm. So, so you're right that having confidence could become a habit, mm. could become your identity, that I'm confident. I know what I'm talking about. Every time I open my mouth, I'm going to look like a leader. Um, and that investment into, into that identity, uh, I suppose at that point in time, your arrogance then begin to work against you. The confidence that you've gotten, you don't have right. preparation behind it. Right. Uh, and you could call that uh, being fucked by your success because the past success gave you the confidence right. that I know. Yeah. And now uh, with that confidence, you're missing preparation about something new that's coming down the pike. So you classically may not have been uh, arrogant. You may have been confident and all wise and all knowing. But when the time changes, when there's a major technological shift or political shift or societal shift that's happening, and you still try to operate with what you learned before, um, now we could say that your arrogance is hurting you in a major way. Right. Instead of like thinking newly about, oh, what might be going on here? This mm -hmm. is like an assessment that, oh, I know what's going on here because I've kind of dealt with this before. Um, yes. but whereas it turns out maybe you, maybe you don't know, maybe it's something new and you don't know how to deal with it. And now there's like no space to move forward. So mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you have a FPS story a fucked by success story? Are we all fucked by success? Are we going to be fucked by success at one point in our lives? Or do some people not have to go through that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the answer to that question, but uh, certainly I think that uh, as I began to think about this, mm -hmm. this uh, phenomena, if we could call it that being fucked by success, I realized, yes, you know, when I started at Microsoft um, right out of college, um, I felt really successful. I felt I knew how to be successful, work really hard, make clear plans and and keep going, keep going and push through whatever gets in your way. That was the way to be successful. Mm -hmm. I had a good run at Microsoft. I enjoyed, you know, promotion after promotion ended up in a really good spot. And then um, as my hobby, really, I started real estate investment business, which did really well. May have something to do with me. Maybe that I was just lucky like crazy at the time when I started around 2004, 2005. And uh, these early successes, they gave me a lot of confidence. They, they, I knew how to manage people. I was manager at Microsoft. I was managing global teams. So I, I knew how to manage, how to plan products, how to hire teams, how to do all these things. I had even raised a lot of money. So yeah. what happened is that it was when I launched my payment system startup. I um, acted with the same great deal of confidence is to say very solid and assertive things and think really hard and make a really good plan and push, push, push. With those principles, running a technology startup, it was a disaster for me at least. Some people mm, had fantastic exit. and uh, But overall vision of the company I really failed and I did not know how to recover, but mm -hmm. it didn't become clear to me at that time that I was mm, fucked by success. But indeed, I think over time when the failure rate, I did another startup which failed. I built a startup incubator, which was being very successful from revenue perspective, but um, I didn't think I was helping or the popular literature like lean startup thinking and all those thinking uh, that I had gotten and read before was really helping um, startups innovate in their directions. In some moment, I began to see that I needed to learn what I had not learned to do this startup business. Mm -hmm. So I guess it was when I began to take responsibility for not knowing, not responsibility for what I knew, but right. responsibility for what I didn't know, my situation began to change. So yes, uh, you could say that once upon a time, I was fucked by success mm. and, and it cost me everything. I've talked to in this uh, podcast before, cost me my health, cost me my marriage, 
And with a great deal of confidence, like an utter fool, I made a lot of messes. And it wasn't up till I began to say, okay, you know what? Maybe I don't know as much as I think that I do. Mm. I began to recover from these messes. Mm. And that's not an easy thing to say. You know, hearing you speak, I'm thinking that probably all of us at one point will be fucked by our success. <laughs> no, mm-hmm. like it's just because if you're not willing to like become a new beginner all the time, always, uh, I mean, not all the time, but like become a new beginner in moments that you need to and ask the question of like, oh, what am, what is, what am I missing here? What am I not looking at? What do I not know about this and own it? Mm-hmm. Then I think it's it's easy to just get trapped in like your past knowledge, right? I guess you're pointing your finger. It's interesting before up till this point, we hadn't we hadn't talked about about this in this way. Yeah. But as you're bringing it up right now, I can see that that this uh, this fuck by success might be uh, part of what is a what is a human design. Uh, it is required that you have certain degree of success and certain degree of power and you have gotten maybe all the things that you wanted either as an individual or as a family or even as a nation. And mm-hmm. now what you got before as a culture, as a whole, perhaps it's now blinding you. Mm-hmm. You think uh, what people at a national level maybe forget that it is their ancestors that got all the success. Their mm-hmm. ancestors knew the rules of success, uh, whatever that was, practice humility, uh, love to learn, uh, work hard, work smart, all those uh, principles. Um, but you've gotten success, you've gotten wealth, and now you act all entitled and arrogant that I deserve this, I deserve this. Mm-hmm. And I think families can get in that way. Oftentimes mm-hmm. families um, uh, that make massive wealth, uh, like on my mother's side, I can see that uh, families that do extraordinarily well and become wealthy eventually it blinds the next generations from what it takes to be successful. There's a lot of falling to um, falling to victimhood. And if you don't get the things that you got before, you think that we are now the victims. Yeah. And here in the United States, um, I guess we could see that we have a culture of entitled and victimized people that includes ourselves that are living in this culture because we yeah. think that we... We deserve, we deserve the rights as mm. if they're all natural phenomena. And we forget that, that, that it's not a natural phenomena that we're going to continue to be successful and continue to be affluent. And how mm. we moved before, moving like that, uh, maybe United States in some moment was able to take a certain position in the world after World War II mm. and learn certain principles on how to mm, patrol the world, how to police the world. But again, at a societal level, working from those principles is not delivering anymore. Yes. So, um, so is it a is it gonna happen to everyone? Hmm. I suppose if you if you have some success in your mm-hmm. career, maybe you know you worked really hard and you graduated from college degree and you got a great job, and that's it. You know, in my case, by the age of twenty five. You are it. You know how to do things. You have a great position. You have a lot of money. Your business is working out. You are a Mm -hmm. know-it-all. So that could lead to, I guess, uh, at an individual or or societal or cultural level or familial level to this phenomena uh, called fucked by success. Yeah. Unless you watch this podcast episode <laughs> in time. <laughs> well, maybe that is that is our hope that, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what I suffered at least. Um, yeah. And you're too young. You know, you, you, you're you having a, a successful career right from the get-go. So it's very good for young people to notice that if you're having a successful career, don't get so drunk with it. Don't begin to uh, pretend that you have gotten the principles Mm. of life, Mm. the little patch of space and time that's working in your favor, that may not be end all. There might be a lot more that you need to learn. So that is exactly why we are doing this. That's our purpose, that uh, people heed our warning. People listen to this and uh, people say, hmm, 
you know, my original intention was, of course, people um, uh, in in my in my batch, in my in my uh, my cohorts, my colleagues that have been successful before in businesses, and now maybe some of them are experiencing some kind of a stuckness, mm-hmm. some kind of a, a failure, and in spite of their best intentions, they cannot go beyond where they have been before. Mm-hmm. In their job in their work, maybe in their business, in their career, whatever worked before is now keeping them locked in where they are and they want to move beyond. My original intention in bringing this topic up was to invite people to to let go the principles that the past success taught them uh, and invent a new future, begin to learn how to invent a new future uh, mm. But I guess it's it's equally applicable to young people that may not have gone through the whole cycle of getting stuck or getting damaged by their own blindness. So mm. in that case, yes, heed our warning and, mm. and watch out when you begin to act like a know-it-all, then yeah. you're headed for being fucked by success and better better pause and take a look and think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we've never talked about it that way before and talking about it like in a like a state and country level, but it, it still applies and that's interesting. Um, So uh, let's go a little bit deeper. You talked about like, you know, um, some of your own network, you know, being stuck and wanting to kind of win them. How, what are, how does this show up, like this symptom show up at work? Um. Like, because I mean, people, they have good intentions most of the time, right? They're not trying to like be arrogant, but like, mm. how, how can this show up at work being fucked by success? Mm. It's a good question. Let me, um, let me hear, I mean, I can, I can share a lot from my time in the corporations and, um, and I've been doing my own startups and sometimes you end up hiring and super fancy people. One time I hired this guy, everybody in the industry uh, knew him as one of the leaders in the startup scene. And Mm -hmm. everyone talked about how awesome his ideas were and how well connected this guy was. So I hired him in a senior role. Mm -hmm. I, I want to say that it was shocking that someone who was perceived to be so high powered and highly connected couldn't really move or bring us a single benefit. In Mm -hmm. every conversation, there was a great deal of debate and assertion about what this guy knew to be true. So he was stuck. Mm -hmm. Our problems were, our challenges were very custom and very local and very niche and before solving our problems, solving our challenges, it would uh, it would have behooved this guy uh, to to slow down, to put aside his learnings and listen to what we had to say and what we had learned about this, about the challenges that we were facing at the time. Uh, mm-hmm. But there was no listening. And mm-hmm. uh, three months later, um, this guy quit himself, which was awesome. I didn't have to fire, but I guess it was obvious to to both sides that it was not working out. And that's mm-hmm. one example um, uh, where, and who knows, I might have acted with certain arrogance in certain places that I might still be blind to. Mm-hmm. If any of my old colleagues listening uh, that realized that I acted with arrogance and I was fucked by success or my title or role or whatever I had gotten, mm, uh, forgive me. And you're welcome to tell me. Um, so in this case, this guy, it was a disaster. It wasted a lot of time in the company, wasted a lot of money. And all we spent time on debating what that person previously knew. So there was no, uh, uh, yeah. space for learning about innovation, learning about the next direction, learning yeah. about where do we go? Yeah. Yeah. I think that you, I think that that's a really good one right there. That if you find yourself like debating a lot and like protecting kind of this idea that, oh, I've done this before, so I know what to do here, that might be a sign um, of, mm. you know, this past experience 
instead of like actually the past experience kind of just trapping you into I know if also mm -hmm. another symptom could be the I know line right mm -hmm. like I know what's happening I know I've done this before more or less like I'm I'm sure I know how to deal with this that could be another symptom right um I know is a declaration that declines to be a new beginner mm. I know mm. is a commitment to ignorance in a certain way, but it doesn't look like it. Yeah, It uh, looks like uh, that uh, you know, and you're going to let everybody know what you know. Yeah. Um, you know, since Google came out and now, especially with ChatGPT, I think knowledge is becoming very accessible. It's very ubiquitous. So what do you know? It, uh, it, it may not be that as special as you might think. Not only it may not be as special, but it may not be so. What you knew to be true was mm. true in a certain context, mm. was in certain settings, mm. in a certain mode of working, like everybody comes, uh, everybody knew to go to office at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., and stay there till 5 p.m., 6 p.m., that everybody knew that. But when the ground on which we stand itself is changing, yeah. When the whole context is shifting, what everybody knows is no longer valid. Yeah. So I know is a is a is a prison of ignorance in which you decline to learn something new. Yeah. Yeah. Especially and, when the things change. Yes. Yes. And one note, uh, we are saying these and talking about these signs and symptoms out of care and concern. Okay. We all fall to I know things and protecting our ideas because we care because we think that you know our idea will help whatever is going on it's not like we have bad intentions or stuff like that or at least most of you listening i'm sure do not so we are calling each other out okay because mm -hmm. we all i also fall to this yes um, sometimes so yeah this is done out of care and love <laughs> yeah you want to okay. give an example of where you might find yourself <laughs> being trapped by what you knew before and mm -hmm. that blocked you from uh, moving forward in a situation i'm curious if something comes to your mind yeah um that's a good question i think without going into too much detail i think maybe uh i and also maybe as a team we might we might be getting stuck with stuck with marketing as in we are taking what we have previously done before that has kind of worked. But, you know, and I was just talking to my friend yesterday and my friend was saying, Vicky, you know, like this time right now, it's different. People are very, well, she was speaking to her truth. People are very resigned. They're tired. They don't mm -hmm. want to do it do it anymore they don't want to continue working they have such much so much resignation about their mm -hmm. jobs that they don't even like see any possibility any possibility of something changing you know mm -hmm. so that that led me to think okay you know what maybe people are in a different state than they were before when we were doing marketing and sales I mean we need to mm -hmm. take a look at that state and see how are we not speaking to it you know mm -hmm. so that idea I yeah. hear you it's brilliant Right. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. That relates to something that we're doing right now mm -hmm. that we're operating with uh, what worked before. Yeah. And um, and it it would behoove us to investigate freshly that yeah. this work of uh, uh, self-expansion uh, and and that we are bringing to people and corporations and startups and founders. How do we bring this work so it's more accessible? Because you're right, people are getting quite fatigued yeah. about listening. But at the same time, another interesting phenomena, I'm seeing that the long-form conversations, they are becoming popular again. There are mm -hmm. several long-form conversations. So what it is that there's a lot of maybe uh, noise and guff that's going on yeah. in the industry, and people are sick and tired of listening to guff. Yeah. Okay, we don't have to work this out right this moment. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. go back to our main topic. But thank you for yeah. alerting us to, to think about yeah, yeah. this. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's change directions a little bit. I think um, I want to 
I'm going to take a quick look at my notes really quickly. Okay, yeah, very good question. What's at stake? Like, what is really at stake um, if someone doesn't catch themselves being fucked by success? Hmm. I think that um, what's at stake is the is the is the opportunity in the moment when mm -hmm. things change, when change occurs as it's mm -hmm. occurring right now, mm -hmm. faster than we have ever seen before. A um, lot of the old stabilities don't work. A lot of the jobs disappear. A lot of the ways of how you got work done, how you got. Um, business and how you struck contracts and created value. A lot of that, it doesn't work. And um, people try to scramble, people try to move left, move right, work really hard on their projects using the same formulas they learned before. So what's at stake that if we fail to be uh, fail to bring some humility to the table, fail to be a new beginner, and fail to learn and fail to move. Um, and in a moment, we should talk about what to do if you find yourself yeah. in this kind of a game. But if you fail to do that, what's at stake is the opportunity that might be right in front of us, that yeah. might remain invisible to us. What's at stake at a at an individual level is the is the one's opportunity to express their potential. Your potential is never expressed in perfect plans, in perfect schemes, your potential in when things are changing is best expressed when you take on whatever disaster that others are avoiding. That's mm -hmm. where you do your best work when you're immersed in something that has all your attention and you're learning about it. And as you're learning about it, you are interacting with it. Maybe you're building a product, maybe you're providing a service, Maybe you are expanding an already existing business, but to do it successfully in the time of change, it requires capacity to learn, capacity to make offers and requests and capacity to take action. So what's at stake is the, is the opportunity, the possibility and your potential that might all remain blocked at an individual level. Maybe you have a senior role and now you think, oh, I'm a CEO, I'm senior VP, I am C this, or I'm director, or I'm a senior engineer. Whatever you have gotten, if you continue to act with what worked before and you find yourself stuck, that's what's at stake is yeah. your life, your opportunity, your career, your future that may not be as satisfying as you want it to be. Yeah. And so I think at the end of the day, what's at stake is your own satisfaction and your own potential um, that uh, that is that is relevant in the moment that may remain hidden, may remain expressed, uh, because you're just with a great deal of confidence going like, I know, I know, I know, I know. You just keep going, I know, I know, I know, uh, but you don't know, and you keep on. Uh, remaining trapped in wherever you are. Mm -hmm. And if you have gotten accidentally in a in a good spot and and good spot meaning financially comfortable uh, spot and and you remain there, fine, you can enjoy that. But nothing new is gonna happen in your life. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a bad spot and keep uh, bad spot meaning it's not financially comfortable and you keep operating with the same principles that worked before, then you continue to either spiral down or remain trapped in a bad spot. So yeah. Yeah. Nothing major, nothing. <laughs> just your life, your opportunity. Yeah, just your life is at stake. <laughs> uh, the whole <laughs> world might end up building GPT <laughs> applications and your company is uh, stuck about what you yeah. think is true about yeah. building systems and building technology and what is human yeah. intelligence. And you exactly. fall to, uh, fall to Luddite moods without mm. trying to fall to Luddite moods. Mm. All what it is that you refuse to learn what's now emerging. Mm. You refuse to pay attention to emergence. So you cannot take advantage of what's going on. Interesting. Kind of just something that popped into my, my mind is a whole chat GPT drama and the, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. You're talking yeah, about but... the CEO? 
and yeah, the board. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, but we won't talk about that. Maybe okay. for the next episode. Okay. Um, but yeah, what uh, something that came to your to my mind when you were speaking was the idea that what's essay could be the very thing that you're trying to protect. Um uh by saying like I know I know and I've got this and everything, whereas it could be slipping from your hands, you mm -hmm. not knowing. Um so so yeah. Yeah, oftentimes you're trying to you think that you've gotten something and you're 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 trying to um keep your bases secure. You don't want to take a risk. You don't want to rock the boat. Mm -hmm. You want to keep uh, keep in your hand what you you have gotten before. But in the time of change, uh, you said it very well. The whole thing might be slipping out of your hand. Yeah. But you're trying to insist that you know, you know, but you don't. And in that case, you're truly fucked by your past success as that success slips slips away from you. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So let's um start uh and kind of ending the conversation. Okay. And so one of my last questions are, so if someone finds themselves here, mm. uh, how can they uh, get unstuck? How do like they reinvent themselves kind of? Like, how do you, how do you get unfucked by success? If yeah, you find yourself much. trapped there? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. I think that we've been talking a lot about it. As a mm -hmm. matter of fact, mm, we have created this uh, uh, hybrid AI human uh, journey that I think you're going to talk about yeah. um, and would be happy to share that with uh, some of our friends. Mm -hmm. um, but the first, you know, we've been talking about this, the first move that makes sense for you to make if you find yourself that my past principles, my past success, what I knew before is not working for me anymore. That moment itself is the beginning to be uh, beginning to be released from this trap is that moment of humility in which mm. you say, uh, what I know ain't so. Mm. And you declare yourself a new beginner in mm. the game that's going on. And you begin to identify some voice, some mentor that can help you think about the situation, that can help you see what you don't want to see. If all what you do is say, well, I'm going to research it out. You know, many, many of us, uh, the smart ones, the smarty pants have a great deal of confidence in their ability to research. They think researching is yeah. what will teach them the, the new perspective. Well, mm -hmm. the challenge with research is that you can only research for what you know. You cannot research for what you don't know. Mm -hmm. So if, with a great deal of confidence, you will spend a lot of time researching and reading Mm -hmm. But you will not shift from where you are because you'll, if you see something unfamiliar or unknown to you, you'll reject it. And if you see something familiar to you and known to you, you'll accept it. And you might say to yourself, I already know this. So nothing changes. Yeah. So the first step is to, is be willing to listen to something you haven't before. Be willing to make a move, maybe even take a mentor that you haven't before who show you something that you don't want to see. Mm -hmm. That is the first uh, move. And then begin to pay attention to, um, for the sake of what you're doing, what mm -hmm. you're doing. Yeah. Begin to create some, uh, uh, begin to have some care about the matter. Mm -hmm. Not just the care about the expansion of your personal wealth or your personal power, that's important but more or less care about where you're engaged. If you're an engineer, maybe there's an area of technology that's changing where there are some problems that are still unresolved or maybe your company is behind. Begin to have care about that. And care isn't about touchy-feely emotional engagement. Care has to do with our willingness to take something on, mm -hmm. our willingness to have an issue with something. That requires courage. Hmm. So beginning to have courage to take something on that no one else is willing to take on as a concern, the solutions will come. The solutions will happen as you hmm. move along, but taking on what you take on, uh, that I think will help you get out of your past confidence. Because when you take something on 
for which you don't have a solution, for which you which others don't have a solution, you are now uh, by the fact of your engagement, by the fact of your commitment to to take on a challenge, take on a breakdown that is not like a well known problem and an all created and everybody knows, but it's more or less uh, it, it hurts everybody, but people are resigned about it. When you take something like that on. Um, you are forced to, you're moved to the time, the space requires you to to learn something that you haven't learned before. Yeah. So that could be, that is an excellent way to get out of this kind of a mess. And then be in action, hmm. make uh, requests to others to do things for you, make offers to others to, to, do, to do things for them that gets you out of your own head. And that mm. gets you in conversations with others. When you're in conversations with others, it is more likely that you're going to detect your blindness and you're going to get confronted and be open to be confronted. Mm -hmm. If you, every time when somebody says something to you that you disagree with and you start fighting with them, like you're going to die on this hill to prove your point right, you have no chance of learning anything new. You have to stop participating in conversations to prove your identity or prove your self-worth. Mm -hmm. You have to start engaging in conversations mm -hmm. where mm, you are engaging to learn something, to see something that is being said and see something that is not being said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To read the invisible, that can only happen once you bring a mood of listening to the table and mm -hmm. not a mood of a problem solver. A mm -hmm. problem solver mood, it uh, it knows it has its own uh, problem solver mood has its own tools, its own past knowings, and with a great deal of confidence in a problem solver mood, we end up um, repeating the same thing that we did before, and no new results show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those are some of the early moves, and you, I think you're gonna tell us in a moment. That was. Uh, in a moment yes but that was very good and i was moved myself listening to you so thank, thank you. you and mm -hmm. um to add to that one thing is that and a metaphor came to mind of like a castle and with big walls you know instead of like uh the castle being the i know and the protecting of past experiences instead break the walls of the castle and build together and l focus less on what we what you know and more on how we can build together hmm. maybe yeah. escape the castle altogether and be in the wilderness <laughs> of i know that i don't know huh? when you're in the wilderness of i don't know you're gonna meet new animals that you might become yeah. friends with yeah. you're gonna have new ideas sure. new opportunities yeah as long as you live in your castle yeah. of i know um then that's all that you can have. You can, mm -hmm. your possibility of navigation is limited to the walls of your castle, hmm? to exactly. continue your castle metaphor. Yeah. Good metaphor good. though. I like it. Good yeah, example. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Um, I think uh, that's it. Um, so we are writing a book uh, by the same name, Fucked by Success. Um, and I have also created a self-paced uh, transformative journey uh, based on AI and human hybrid coaching, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's free. So if you're listening to this and if you're interested uh, in, in taking this journey, drop us a note and we'll send it to you. It is not available to everyone right now. It's not public, it's private. So it's in, by invitation only. So if you're listening to this and you are interested, drop, a, drop me a note or Zakib or you know, write in the comment that you would like to take it and uh, we'll send it to you. Indeed, and it's it's essentially we have done a detailed job of prompting you with certain questions. We have short videos and some exercises and some questions that help you redesign your career path. Yeah. Fucked by Success is all about redesigning your career path or redesigning your business path and really about reinventing a new future that mm -hmm. would not happen. There is a certain future that is already headed for you. If you don't change anything about what you're doing, then you have some clear future that's coming. Yeah. And if you like it, and if it's fine, and you're okay with it, no need to listen to any of it. But if you don't like the future that's coming for you, that's coming at you, 
um, if you don't change in a major way, if you don't like that future, then I suggest that you pause and you take uh, Victoria and I up on our offer, drop us a note and we'll send you this, this, uh, this transformational coaching journey uh, as our gift and our treat. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Um, right. I think that's it. Thank you. And with that, we conclude episode 12 of the Alt Podcast. Fucked by success, untrap yourself from the past and design your future. Thank you, Sakya, for your for sharing your expertise and insights. Thank you. And Victoria. don't forget, everyone, to tune in next time in the same place, the same time for more Altwork conversations. I am Victoria Relas, and this has been the Altwork Podcast. Thank you. Thank you.